Subnetting is a complex topic for the most CCNA candidates, but even more complex than that, of course, is using VLSM, Variable Link Subnet Masking. Well, I'm Ronnie Wong, and I'm here to show you what the pros know. All right, many CCNA candidates, as they learn how to do subnetting, they take to that fairly quickly and easily. But when it comes to variable link subnet masking, that's when they start running into issues because they begin to start off with that same idea of creating equal, but of course, smaller and different networks. With variable link subnet masks, remember that we're actually having different subnets within the block that we're doing. So here's a typical example of how most candidates begin to tackle this and then they get frustrated. Let me show you what's going on here. So here's an example of this network, right? 192.168.128.0 with a slash 24. So we know that's one class C network. So to begin to break that down, normally we get questions that says, hey, you need to create a network with four hosts on it or with two hosts on it. You need to create another one that has eight hosts or six hosts, whatever it might be, right? So you begin to work that way. And then normally at the end, you actually get one that says, 75 host or 100 host, whatever it might be. So here's a breakdown. I did it fairly standard in the way that we do. So if we start over here on the left-hand side, notice that we started off with the smallest networks here that give us two hosts. And then that continues to increase. So I just incremented by, of course, adding in one additional bit here, the slash 29 instead of slash 30. And as you go on through, you see that it actually creates networks. And as you look at those, if you go ahead and do it, it works out fine on paper. Everything looks great. But here's what begins to happen as well, okay? Once you start working it out, you start to try and apply some different networks to the same router. Now this is when a problem begins here. So let's take a note here. We'll just use these first two as our example of the 128.0 network and the 128.4 with these subnet masks. So I've brought up a router for us and let me zoom back out so that we can see this. And we'll just start with uh, interface gigabit zero slash zero. I do an IP address, got the spell address right, 192.168.128.1, and we'll do the 30-bit subnet mask here. So that's a no shutdown, so that makes sense. So our next network is the one that begins with the dot four is what we see right here. So I know that in the next interface over here that it should allow me to do, be IP address 192.168.128.5, which is going to be my first host. And then that's going to be a 248 subnet mask as well. And when I do that, there we go. We get this particular notification and we wonder why. Why is it actually doing something like this when the subnet mask, the variable link subnet masking worked out perfectly on paper? Then you might go, all right, so that didn't work out, but why? So you go to a subnet mask calculator, and this is what begins to show you what can happen. So we've got the same thing over here. So I just picked one that was online, 192.168.0.1 address. But if I go ahead and choose this 0. Uh, let's do the 128 here to make it fair and equal. So once I do that, we can start seeing. Let me go ahead and do that so we can see the actual entire range here. So there's 1 through 254. We change that to a slash 30. So there it is. One and two are part of the network here. So that's good. So let me go to the very next network and we'll say dot four and we'll change this up to the 248. And now notice it didn't begin at four, which is where my math should have began. Okay. It actually went all the way back to the zero is what we see here on the subnet ID. So why didn't that happen? It happened because of the way that subnetting ends up working or binary math ends up working. You have to take the largest chunks first because it doesn't give us any remainders to be able to do what we want to do. Now, I know that there's probably a technical term that somebody can actually answer. So please do put those in the comments. I don't know what the technical term for it is, but let me show you the proper way to do this. So for us to not run into any issues like that, instead, what we want to do is we want to do it this way. Now, if we do it this way, notice what ends up happening instead. So we wanna start off on the left-hand side with the largest block that we want to create. So whatever list that they give you, make sure you take the largest chunk of possible host that you can get. 
So for example, here I have 126 hosts. If I'm asked to create a network that gives me a possibility of 100 hosts, and then I get one that says possibility of 50, I get one that says possibility of 30, and then 10, and of course you continue to go down, always choose the largest one first, and when we do so, now notice that the uh, uh, CIDR notation here is 25, 26, 27, 28. And it begins to do this where now the number of hosts begin to drop. And notice that each subnet size is decreasing. And that even leaves me with ability to actually create two different smaller networks as well. So it's just the way that the block size ends up working out. And it has to do with that binary math. Now. Let's verify that I'm, what I'm telling you is true. So if we start off with this one, let's go to the subnet mass calculator, which is faster than me typing. So we'll start off here. And instead, we'll start off with the 128.0. And then we'll change this to that slash 25, which is going to end in this 128. And now notice it actually brings me over to that next network, okay? Or to that first network here, beginning with the subnet ID of Oh, uh, uh, zero. Okay, couldn't remember what the subnet ID was. Now, let me verify so I'm not lying to you. So notice the next network here is 128, which means the next address that I can use is 129. So now if I choose the 128 here, and then we'll go all the way down to this one, which is a slash 26, I believe. Now notice it went ahead and it figured it out that here's the next range and we continued to be able to do that. So it should allow us to actually keep the spaces that we need to. So remember that as you continue to do variable link subnet masking, always start off with the largest chunk that you're given first. And that will ensure that you won't run into problems that look exactly right on math, but it'll actually work out correctly on your routers and of course, you can verify it using subnet calculators as well. Well, I'm Ronnie Wong, and that is what the pros know.